In this video we're going to look at heat engines and the maximum efficiency that you can achieve using a heat engine to extract work. So a heat engine consists of a part over here which consists of a hot reservoir, something which is a high temperature and is a large amount of substance so it's very resistant to changes in temperature. And you have a cold reservoir, a system here with uh, low temperature and very high heat capacity so it's very resistant to changes in temperature as well and in the middle we have the engine part which is going to extract heat from the hot reservoir flowing to the engine and then it's going to try to output uh, as much energy as it can to do work on something so this might be doing work on a piston to push an axle to push some wheels in a car might be something to push a turbine to generate electricity. Uh, any type of energy generating activity you please, you can just imagine that this work is going to generate some energy which humans will find useful. And then uh, as a result, there's some energy which is lost as heat which is pumped into this cold reservoir as a result. So we want to avoid do as much heat going to the cold reservoir as possible and maximize the amount of work that we can do given the temperature of these hot and cold reservoirs. So let me make, just make sure we have TH temperature of the hot reservoir, TC temperature of the cold reservoir. Okay, so the internal energy change in our engine, delta U engine, is going to be the sum of all of the ways in which energy can is, can enter or escape from the engine. So that's going to be QH, heat from the hot reservoir, plus QC, heat which is released to the cold reservoir, plus W, the useful work which is done on the system. And since these are the only ways in which energy can enter or leave the system, being a closed system, that means that this delta U here, the sum of all these must be zero for conservation of energy for the first law to be satisfied. Okay, then moving on to the second law, we have delta S of the engine. We know that the minimum entropy which can be possible for the engine is zero, otherwise it would have to be greater, but a greater entropy we'll see will will require um, less than ideal efficiency. So the delta S for the engine is going to be D reversible heat for from the hot reservoir divided by temperature of the hot reservoir plus DQ reversible to the cold reservoir divided by the temperature of the cold reservoir and work doesn't contribute to the entropy change so we don't have that in there and the minimum value that these can be is zero so if it's and if it's done reversibly then these then this entropy change will be zero as we've shown okay so we know that QH plus QC plus W the two values of heat plus work have to be equal to zero so that means that if you move work to the other side minus W equals QH plus QC. So we can define the maximum efficiency possible of the engine given the temperatures of the hot and cold reservoirs. It's going to be the ratio of work to heat which is withdrawn from the hot reservoir. So if we have perfect efficiency 100% of this heat will go from the hot reservoir to the heat engine and be output as work and there will be no heat transferred to the cold reservoir. That would be 100% or 1 if we just have it uh, in numerical terms. Okay, and we know that minus work equals QH plus QC so that's going to be QH plus QC over QH. So that's our maximum possible efficiency. Then from the entropy relationship we have up here, we know that uh, the heat from the hot uh, reservoir divided by its temperature 
plus heat from the cold reservoir divided by its temperature equals zero. So if we move this value to the other side, we know that they have to have equal and opposite magnitudes. Well, equal magnitudes and opposite signs. So we'll have that QH over TH will equal, oh, way off on that one, equal minus QC over TC. So if you multiply uh, both sides there by TH, well, or multiply both sides by TC, we'll have that QC equals minus QH times TC over TH. That's just rearranging this equation here. So we're going to substitute this value of QC into this expression here. And you should be able to convince yourself of the algebra that the maximum efficiency now, substituting in this value here, is going to be 1 minus the cold temperature over the hot temperature. So this is the maximum possible efficiency we can have uh, that satisfies both the first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics. So what does this mean? This means that the only way we can have 100%, which 1 is 100% here, the only way we can have 100% perfect efficiency is if Tc equals 0 Kelvin. Again, these temperatures should be in Kelvin to calculate this. Um, so we know that if we substitute in zero here, then we have zero divided by something equals zero. So we have one minus zero, that'll be one. So the only way to get a perfect heat engine is to have a cold reservoir, which is at absolute zero. And that's not possible in practice. You can get quite close, but the colder your cold reservoir, the better maximum efficiency you can have. Or the higher ratio of the temperature of the hot reservoir to the temperature of the cold reservoir, the better efficiency that you can get. And similarly, another point of note would be you get a 0% efficiency when the hot reservoir equals in temperature to the cold reservoir. So if Tc equals Th, you have something divided by the same thing as 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0% 0 efficiency. So this is another consequence of the second law that you can't get a free lunch here, that uh, any, any difference, any work which is extracted from this system must be exploiting a difference in temperature from the hot and the cold reservoir. There has to be a reason for this heat flow to occur. This heat will not flow unless there is some temperature differential between the hot and the cold. But if there is some differential, then depending on how large that is, you can extract some percentage of that heat and use it to do useful work in a heat engine. But uh, the second law does place restrictions and bounds on how much work you can get out depending on those temperatures.